Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your earth science teacher, Mr. Stano. The last time we left off, we were talking about weathering, more specifically physical weathering. And we noticed with frost action or with plant or root action that basically as the roots grow down, they crack open the rock or the same with frost action as water makes it down, freezes and expands, it cracks open the rock, which allows more water to penetrate into that substance. What we notice is that as we increase the surface area, which means basically the area that is exposed to the elements, that air or water, so this would have a certain surface area, six meters squared, that as we get increased surface area, so we take that same volume, but break it up into more pieces or to even more pieces, we increase the rate of weathering. As more is exposed of that surface, the more that weathering can occur. So for example, this rock was definitely one whole piece. It's split apart. Now this whole surface can be weathered and everything here. The same with the inside of this rock and all on the outside. By increasing the surface area, we increase our rates of weathering. Therefore, breaking rocks into smaller pieces causes them to weather faster, also known as a direct relationship. Tombstones, we can see this. They're example, perfect examples or great examples of weathering. See brand new tombstones. Very nice, clean edges. Everything here, the lettering is almost perfect. Brand new. The cleaner the lettering or the more precise, detailed everything is, the newer it is or less weathering has been exposed to versus a tombstone like this where we can see we could barely make out the writing down here all this nice scroll work is almost erased so this one has been weathered for a longer period of time than this one there also is a difference in materials that we'll talk about later on the next type of weathering we're talk about is chemical weathering in this situation here with chemical weathering, the actual chemical composition is changed of the material versus physical weathering where it's not. We have one type of chemical weathering that we see pretty often, and that is oxidation. This is where oxygen from the air combines with the minerals to form oxides, also known as rust. And we can see evidence of it right over here. Or you can see this on a day-to-day -day basis. Some cars, you'll see it. Um, any metal around your house that's sitting outside exposed to the elements may be oxidizing. Here we can see this is a cleat to a boat. Um, and you can see here that basically this has been oxidizing. Even these nuts and bolts right here are all oxidizing, or these nails right there. Red sand has been oxidized. There's an iron content to some of that sand, and as that is exposed to oxygen, it turns this red color or oxidizes. Okay, Statue of Liberty made of copper, Armenian copper actually. Uh, it's about the thickness of two pennies put together. Uh, and it turns this nice green color right here as it oxidizes. The oxidation of copper, calls it, it gives it a patina or this greenish color. We also have carbonation. This is when water containing a slight acidic solution or carbonic acid dissolves minerals and makes limestone caves. So if you've ever been to um, Howe Caverns before, let's go to here, they are made up of mostly limestone bedrock and water will have broken them down over time through carbonation. Also, we have talked about sinkholes that occur in Florida. Same thing, their bedrock is mostly limestone, so as water comes through, it helps break it down. But the caves themselves form, basically as water comes in, it's going to seep through and break down some of this limestone. As time goes on, it's going to break down more and more of the limestone, and you'll have these nice caves that eventually form. What we can get forming are cool features known as stalactites and stalagmites, just like we see here. So as that limestone breaks down, the water comes down, drips, and deposits small amounts of minerals on there. And eventually the water drips, comes down, and starts piling materials up here. Stalactites growing from the top of the ceiling, stalagmites from the bottom. 
granite we could do the same thing but it takes a huge period of time for it to happen but you can see here this was subjected to a good amount of water for a long period of time and slowly broke down some of the minerals that make it up can happen we'll end right here with the screencast i hope you enjoyed it take care